Hi YouTubers, welcome to one of my videos. I just discovered something very interesting to do with these do-it-yourself low-pass radio filters you can buy in kit form. And what I've discovered um, from making a few of these now is um, sometimes I'll destroy them. <laughs> like this one. But it's not that, it's to do with the windings. Now, very, very basically, I found that when I'd finished them, I couldn't get the frequencies right, you know, at where the 3dB point was. And um, very simply, I took windings off, added windings on, changed capacitors, didn't seem to make a lot of difference. And that's why this one's all hibbledy piggledy. Um, my tip is, if you're making one of these, do it in bands first. Like start with a 20 meter band and just put those coils in. But don't actually put them on the board on the front. Keep them long wires and put them on the back. You know, across the capacitors so you've still got the holes in the circuit board. Um, and this is when I started to, to discover that the instructions that are online are wrong. And for example, L1 and L2 for the 40 meter band. I could not get that right. I could not get it right. So I checked the windings. I got exactly the right windings. So I thought I'd reverse them. So I put L1 into L2 and L2 into L1. And it worked first time after that. And I repeated the process down. So L1 and L2 are reversed, L5 and L6 are reversed. Basically where the one with the most turns is in the opposite position. So if one's 16 and one's 19, wherever they say fit the 19, put it where the 16 goes. And it's absolutely spot on with the 3 dB point. And it doesn't matter if you close the windings up or make them bigger. It doesn't change it. It doesn't. So that, I think, is done deliberate, to be honest. And um, I'll get my nano DNA and I'll show you the results of just swapping the windings between L1 and L2, for example, and across the other bands. Okay, got my nano VNA set up. It's just going in and out. Set to the 20 meter band. Right, and I'm, it's scanning from 3 to 40 megs. There. That number one is 14.1 megahertz there. And it's minus 2.87 dB and you can see how steep it is and I'll just just see if I can that's 14.47 megahertz is minus 3.16 so you can see from there if I move it along if I go to 7 meg it's minus 3 dB and if I go to 1.7, go to 3 meg, it's uh, 1.72. Let me change this to 1 um, megahertz. Right. Oh. Start. There we go. 1 
one megahertz. So if I go down, let's get, get me marker. Has that got it? Yeah. So if I go to one meg, which is right over here, that's minus 1.5 dB. Move along. 4.9 meg minus 2 dB. 8, 11. So when you get, sorry, I'm trying to do this single handed. Right, at, at 14.65 megahertz, it's minus 3.3 dB. And you can see how steep that is. Right, now we're going to switch over to the 40 meter band. Right, now this is the 40 meter band. Right, let's move this. Right. At 6.46 megahertz, it's minus 2.2 .2 dB. 7.24 oh, megahertz, it's 2.91 dB. I go over the edge at 7.6 megahertz, it's 3.5 dB. And you can see how sharp this is here. And all I've done is swap them round. You know, the one with the most turns, for example, goes into the opposite one and vice versa. Um, it doesn't matter if you spread the windings or add capacitors. I found that's the best way of doing it. Right, now I'm going to go to 30 meter band. Right, 30 meter band. One of 30 meter band, yep. Yeah. And I'm still at 7.6 megs. 8, 9, 10. 10 megahertz. Again, very sharp roll off. And um, all it is, is to do with the, um, the windings. Makes a lot of difference. So thanks for watching this video, please subscribe and like.